I'm Joan Manson. Thank you for joining me today in my second review of the Neocolor 2, building on a previous painting to see what sticks. All my materials are ready. And we're ready to start. Okay. In my image, I didn't realize the tail didn't end here. There's a light cast and then the actual tail continues down into the grass. So I have used this chisel brush to bring down some of the crayon. It doesn't wash away the previous color now it's all dry, but it will bring it down and bring some of the color out. So I'm adding here, and I'm going to be adding, I'm going to be adding uh, other detailing to create the tail feathers so that it's watercolor uh, graphite pencil. And this is another photo I took of the same bird head fully immersed in the bird feeder. So what I decided to do was draw in the bird feeder, put the bird over here so it looks like there's one feeding and one looking at us. And, um, and then I'm going to do background, just color, nothing in particular. So now, hot cup of coffee in hand, I am going to take a look at doing the background first. I was going to bring up salt, but I'll work on blooms. I wanted to see if I could get blooms working here. So background, I want to have some greens. Now, if I were doing this with traditional watercolors, I would have laid the water down first. But I'm working this way and I'm trying to learn how to use them, the Neocolor 2. And let me bring in my oval brush and some waters. Now that's a little clumpy for me. So what I do is bring water up here and I'm going to handle it differently it blends in pretty nicely of course I'm not blending it away as much as I want I'm not handling it the way I really want to but let me do what I've got going on here This is nice. There's a lot of concentrated. Let's just put a little light down there. Okay. Now not quite sure how this is going to work. Let me get a brush in over here, a round brush. Okay, there's a nice number four round brush. I'm not quite clear on how long I'm supposed to wait. Let me 
it's probably still a little too wet. For that, and I want to get more of this in here. So let me get that green brush in here. Oh, this is nice. The illusion of leaves. Okay, it will, I can do a bloom. I'm not quite sure. Sort of a more controlled bloom. Doesn't spread out quite the way that the others do, but... Oops, sorry, I don't have it fastened down anymore. Now this is still bound, so the paper is buckling a bit, but I do see some bloom, blooms coming up. I can say bloom.
Now I'm going to lay some yellow on top of that green. The green's not quite wet, dry, excuse me, but with a neo color too. The yellow lays on top of the green. It doesn't meld into the background like a watercolor would. It stays on the surface. So it is, when I move it into the area that's really wet with the greens, it's blending to make a yellow green. But in the areas where it's a bit drier, it just stays yellow. And now I'm working on the second cardinal, first with that bright yellow, and then with the orange. I'm working in the, the colors in the direction that the feathers would go. And I'm keeping it pretty consistent. The level is pretty even so that when I paint it out, I hope that the paint will be even as well. And now I'm bringing in some other darker brown, a sienna, which is a nice amount of red in it, which in turn blends well with the orange and the yellow. This original Im image didn't have a shadow, but because of the composition I have here, I am adding some shadow. And now I'm bringing in the water, and that yellow is vibrant. These colors do truly take on a lovely vibrance when you add the water to it. Of course, if you're just coloring very lightly, the wet neo color will be very light as well. But in this case, I kept it at a medium pressure and a pretty consistent coverage. And I'm very pleased. And now I'm adding some of that sienna to the bird seed so that I can bring some of the color of the bird into the background. And make the seed more two dimensional, although I'm still not trying to make it look like a photorealistic image. I just want the color and the texture to be there. And I'm having a good time doing that. I'm having good success with the Neo color too. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm sprinkling with salt to see if I can create some texture with the salt, but it didn't work. A little later, I'll I'll dust it off, and there'll be no difference. So, salt is not the salt effect does not work with the neo color. It does work with watercolor. If you lay it out at just the right time, the salt will absorb the watercolor, but that doesn't happen here. But as I've shown you, you can do blooms, which is a nice effect for creating a model texture. Adding more shadow. Some of the sanguine to shadow the green. 
greenery here. Now, I need to work on the tail feathers here. Okay. The blending in addition I did on the tail feathers seems to be coming along very nicely. Adding the purple that I used originally, of course the shadows and the white to highlight the ridges of the individual tail feathers worked out very nicely. Adding a little bit more of that purple to create some deeper shadows and a nice contrast with the yellow and the orange. So there's a little bit of a bounce. And then when that purple is blended into the yellow, it turns into a brown, a warm brown. And I have some good hard edges there. I'm going to bring in the Payne's Gray pencil this is the Payne's Gray watercolor pencil from Karen Dash I'm just going to make some darker shade shadow here And let me bring that white pencil over here. A little okay. And um, I want to bring of the white up here. I have salt underneath my paper. Um, some white to lighten up the tummy here because there's a lot of light coming through. Okay, 
and that takes care of that end. Um, let's see if I the drying business here. Now let me take another look. I'm going to darken this area here with the pencil. Again, that's Payne's Gray. And now I'm making sure everything is sort of dry. I'm going to start using the pens. finished with most of this but I'm going to start working with the pens and I think try the medium first Not sure, let's see. That was the medium. This is the small. I said this isn't something I usually do. What I usually do is work in graphite. and then use watercolor pencils to color on top of that. I don't want to do a lot of lines. Have to be careful. The paper is buckling a little bit, and that's my fault. So I'm just turning the paper around. This is sort of late 18th century, no, late 19th century, early 20th century illustrating techniques. And of course they'd use pen and ink. Um, highlight this with a few pen strokes here and there okay and over here as well okay now I need a ruler over here That's right. And the same over here. I'm not going to go all the way up. All right. And here.
Now, let me go over here. And this is dry enough. As I said, these are waterproof. Turn this around so I can work with it. Now this is by no means what I had hoped or planned for this to look like. But um, sort of interesting. It does have a nice illustrated flare. thing about illustration is that you get to use multimedia and I think in that way illustration has had a great impact on art in the 20th century and uh, the 21st century now let me see Just a few. Not too fond of that. But Waterproof ink from Papa Castell works beautifully on top of the Neo Color too, and so now we can use that as a multimedia if we wish to. If you've enjoyed watching this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't been following me and you'd like to, please click on the subscribe button. And if you've been with me before, I really appreciate your sticking with me. Take care and thank you very much.